Having first done some case painting and then a little building, we now have two pretty cool looking gaming rigs. For the most part, both systems are much the same, the key difference of course being the platforms used. From the red team, we have the AMD FX8320 and its accompanying 970 motherboard, and the blue team is being represented by the Core i5-6400 and Z170 motherboard combo. In today's money, the AMD system costs around 1100 USD to build, which works out to be about 1700 AUD. The Intel system on the other hand was slightly more pricey at 1150 US or almost 1800 Australian dollars. Keep in mind that although the Core i5-6400 costs almost 60% more than the FX8320, the total system build cost comes out at less than 10% more. With the exception of the motherboard and processor, the rest of the systems are much the same. They were both built into the Silverstone KL05 case, feature 8GB of memory, a single Radeon R9390, the Silverstone TDO2 Slim Liquid Cooler, and the Silverstone Strider Essential 700W power supply. The Windows 10 operating system was installed on the Samsung SSD850 EVO 500GB model and the Western Digital Blue 4TB was used as a secondary storage device. Both processors were overclocked, though I realised that Intel has done its best to close the door on non-K overclocking, so the results have been included for those that are still interested in running the previous BIOS. Obviously the Radeon R9390 will be handling all the rendering and I've decided to test at both 1080p and 1440p. The 1080p results should help to remove GPU bottlenecks, exposing any weakness on the CPU side. Most gamers spending over a thousand US on a gaming rig are probably targeting 1440p gaming though, so those results will be included too. With all that said, let's move on to the benchmarks. Battlefield 4's single player campaign isn't very CPU intensive, so you might wonder why we included it. The idea here will be to show a range of games, some CPU intensive and some not so much. Starting with Battlefield 4, we see that even with a Radeon R9390, the FX 8320 and Core i5 6400 deliver very similar results, even when overclocked. Increasing the resolution from 1080p to 1440p does nothing to change the performance margins, as you might expect. Batman Arkham Knight is clearly a CPU intensive title, and as a result, the stock standard FX 8320 looks quite weak when compared to the Core i5 6400, despite delivering a very playable average frame rate. Even the minimum 54 FPS is acceptable, although when compared to the 106 FPS of the 6400, the 50% reduction in performance is quite shocking. Overclocking the FX8320 helps to minimise the damage as the minimum frame rate is bolstered by 30% to 71 FPS. Increasing the resolution to 1440p helps to minimise the performance margin between the 8320 and the 6400. The average frame rates are now quite similar, though the FX processor is still 33% slower out of the box when comparing the minimum frame rate and a little over 10% slower once overclocked. Like Battlefield 4, the single player portion of Black Ops 3 isn't particularly demanding and we see that the FX8320 is able to deliver similar performance to that of the Core i5-6400. Increasing the resolution to 1440p doesn't really change the performance margins. Again we see that once overclocked, the FX8320 is able to get the most from the Radeon R9390 in this title. Late last year I put together a video showcasing the overclocking performance of various non-K Skylake processors and in that video the FX8350 was also included. Used for testing was Fallout 4 along with a few other games. The Fallout 4 results shocked a few people, not because of how fast the Skylake processors were, but rather how slow the FX8350 was, at times dipping to just 17 FPS with a Fury X handling the rendering. As expected, a few diehard AMD fans questioned the accuracy of the results. Quite a bit of effort on my behalf was spent trying to improve the performance of the FX system, but in the end I gave up. Now a number of patches later, we still find the FX series can't hold a candle to the Skylake processors in certain sections of the game. The frame rates in the Boston City section of the game are significantly lower than other sections of the game, even on the Intel processors. Still, despite the heavy overclock, the 4.8GHz FX8320 isn't able to overcome this issue. Here you'll see that increasing the resolution to 1440p doesn't reduce the performance of the Radeon R9390 in this section of Fallout 4. The FX8320 still dips to just 25fps with a 28fps average. The Core i5-6400 also delivered virtually the same performance in both its out-of-the-box and overclocked configurations. Here we see that the Fallout 4 performance is significantly different to what we saw when testing in Boston. As we exit the vault, the FX8320 saw a 50fps minimum with an average of over 60fps. It is worth noting that the Core i5-6400 at its standard operating frequencies was still faster than the overclocked FX8320. Now at 1440p, we find that the vault section of the game still plays reasonably well on the FX8320 
And finally, the 4.8 GHz overclock is able to deliver a little extra performance. That said, the stock Core i5 6400 is still 14% faster than the heavily overclocked FX processor. Just Cause 3 is another very CPU intensive video game, and as such, the FX8320 really suffers. Here at 1080p, the overclocked FX8320 was good for just 51 FPS on average, with a 36 FPS minimum. Meanwhile, the 6400 never dropped below 45 FPS, allowing for a 63 FPS average. Increasing the resolution to 1440p had little impact on the FX8320 performance, as we were already CPU limited at 1080p. The Core i5-6400 became noticeably slower at 1440p, but was still a great deal faster than the FX processor. Mad Max is a GPU limited game, this is why we see the FX8320 and Core i5-6400 providing identical performance at 1080p. Naturally, increasing the resolution to 1440p does nothing to change the performance margins, and again we find that the AMD and Intel processors deliver the same performance. Like Mad Max and Battlefield 4, we find that Rainbow Six Siege is another game that's primarily GPU dependent. As a result, all configurations are able to get the most out of the Radeon R9 390. Moving to 1440p removes virtually all performance margins and we see just one FPS separating the fastest configuration from the slowest. The Core i5-6400 enjoyed a slight performance advantage at 1080p, though it has to be said that the FX8320 was more than capable here. Upping the resolution to 1440p eliminated any performance variables allowing the FX8320 to match the Core i5-6400. The Witcher 3 results are probably the most shocking we've seen so far. Even at 4.8GHz, the FX8320 is seriously outclassed by the stock Core i5-6400, which averaged 65fps, making it 27% faster. Overclocked, the 6400 was a beast, reaching an average frame rate of 86fps. Increasing the resolution to 1440p narrowed the gap between the overclocked and stock Core i5-6400 configurations, but it didn't help the FX8320 close in on the 6400, which remained almost 30% faster when comparing the average frame rate. In the out-of-the-box configurations, the Core i5-6400 consumed just over 20% less power than the FX8320. Once overclocked, that figure increased, and it was crazy to see the power meter reading over 500 watts for the AMD system, and just shy of 400 watts for the Intel system, given the relative performance. The margins were even greater when looking at the Call of Duty Black Ops 3 power figures, here the Core i5-6400 consumed 27% less power and over 30% less once both processors were overclocked. It's hardly a surprise that the Intel Skylake Core i5 system delivered superior performance and it should be well established now that the AMD FX range is inferior. What gives the FX processors some merit is the price. At just $120, the FX8320 is considerably cheaper than the $190 Core i5-6400. As I said earlier, that makes the Intel processor almost 60% more expensive, and if I were reviewing these CPUs side by side, that figure would have a huge impact. However, in the grand scheme of things, the $70 price difference doesn't account for much, less than 10% of the total build cost in fact. So if I gave you the option of the red box or the blue box, with the latter costing just 6% more, which one would you choose? Does paying almost 60% more for the Core i5-6400 make any difference? Of course not, and this is the problem AMD faces for any system build exceeding $500. The CPU savings becoming pretty much irrelevant beyond that point, particularly given the resulting performance. Overclocked or not, with all things considered, the blue box is unquestionably the one I'd be recommending. Hopefully later in the year I'll be drawn to the red team once Zen lands. Fingers crossed, right? As always, I'm your host Matt, and I'll see you guys next time.